Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find His mercy. Come to the table, we will satisfy. Taste of His goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so And welcome to the online service from Bridges Community Church. We are so glad that you decided to connect with us in this way today. Uh, if you are new to our church, we would love for you to click that I'm new button over there on the side of the screen. And that will enable us to get in contact with you this week and see if there's any way that we could be praying for you or any way that we could get you plugged into the life uh, of our local church here uh, in the Bay Area. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me
For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Well, today is a very special Sunday at Bridges Community Church, where we draw attention to the importance of life in the womb. Uh, yesterday, we partnered with Real Options Pregnancy Center for a walk for life. Um, and that event, one, raises awareness around this very important issue, but two, uh, we were able to raise funds to provide for some very critical needs uh, at Real Options. And if you don't know a lot about Real Options, we're going to tell you uh, some, of, uh, some of the various things they do to serve both, both women and men and babies. And we love partnering with them because of the comprehensive culture of life um, that they help promote in our area and really all around the world. Um, the Bible teaches um, that, that life really begins in the womb. You'll hear uh, Valerie, the CEO of Real Options Pregnancy Center, talk about Psalm 39 or Psalm 139 in just a minute. Um, but the Bible also shows that life begins in the womb all kinds of other places. In, uh, in, in Luke 1, we see the, the pregnant Mary uh, with Jesus in her womb. She goes to visit Elizabeth, who's pregnant with John. And when Mary walks in, um, and the, the baby John in Elizabeth's womb is either near Jesus or near Mary. Uh, he starts doing backflips in the womb, right? He's excited somehow to be around Jesus or to be around Mary. And so even in the womb, our personalities um, begin to be developed. Uh, modern science has started to tell us this too, right? They, we, we, we learn that babies can hear their mother's voice and their father's voice and babies really start to learn who their parents are before they're even born so that these aren't complete strangers to them when they come out into the world. Um, these, are, these are human lives that experience um, excitement like John, um, can experience pain if you go in there and poke on them. Um, they're developing their personalities. Um, they, are, they are real people. Um, we're not we're not talking about a mass of cells uh, that's void of any type of consciousness. We're talking about humans. Um, and if we lose one of those humans, it's a tragedy. I think, uh, I think we instinctively know that babies in the womb um, are are humans, and any time we lose one of them, it's a tragedy um, because of how how we care for, how we empathize with, with parents who've had a miscarriage. Um, Beth and I are um, very close to a couple. Um, we have a, have a deep relationship with these special people that have very unfortunately suffered through three miscarriages, um, very late term miscarriages. And it, it's devastating. Um, it's, it's a huge tragedy. We cried with them, uh, we cried for them. We're walking through this with them. We don't know what's in their future. They don't know what's in their future, right? Um, they're justifiably terribly upset, and we are too, because we've been alongside of them through that whole journey. And if it's just a mass of cells that they lost, why be so upset? Why say, I've lost my babies, right? Why would they say, and they do, they say, we've, we've lost our children. Why, why say that during that tragedy if it's just a mass of cells? And the answer is, because they have lost a child. That was a baby. And if the baby in the womb is a human life, then we are obligated to protect it. 
um, especially as Christians, we have that obligation. Proverbs 31, 8 uh, teaches us, instructs us to give voice to those who don't have a voice. Speak for those who are not able to speak. So if someone is suffering, if they're oppressed in some way, they uh, have injustices against them, and they don't have the voice or the platform to be able to defend themselves, then we, as Christians, have an obligation to speak for them. Um, that's what we're doing today. We're using our voice to speak for those who do not have a voice and to draw attention to them. So here in just a second, you'll see um, an interview between me and Valerie Hill, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Real Options Pregnancy Center. And before that, you're gonna hear a testimony of someone who uh, was a patient at Real Options and received care through Real Options Pregnancy Center. So uh, you will enjoy hearing um, how our mission partner, uh, Real Options Pregnancy Center, is working uh, to protect the most vulnerable in our society and promote a general culture of life uh, all around the Bay Area. I can say that my family was like any typical family. I was married for 22 years. I have my son who's 20. Well, he's going to be turning 20 pretty soon. My girl who's 12. It was just the four of us. One day, you know, I just felt like the pain on my breast. And I'm like, you know, I don't think it's cancer. I'm just going to go check it out. That's when they actually did the pregnancy test. They actually, you know what, you're expecting. I came home, I talked to my husband. And then he's like, well, you know what, Yesenia, to be honest, I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't feel the same thing. I mean, I'm going to be there for the, for, for the child, but I, I just don't want to be with you. I mean, you know, I, I just don't love you anymore. So many things just came out, you know, came to my mind. My biggest concern was her being, ra ra raising her without her, her, her father. I was already depressed. Why am I bringing this child to this life? I felt like I tried to convince myself, like, have, like you know, having an abortion was okay. That's when I called Planned Parenthood and then I asked them, you know, what happens. And then she's like, oh yeah, no problem. You just come in and you know we'll keep you here for a short time and then you just go home and. So they made, they made it look like so easy. They gave me the appointment for a week. I grabbed my Bible, I kneeled down and I just kept crying. I just kept crying and, and I told, you know what, I gotta give me a sign because you know that I, I don't wanna do this. We actually parked and then I actually see this really nice gal. She was standing right next to the bus stop. And then, you know, she just came to me and she gave me this pamphlet. The pamphlet said, are you making the right choice? And then it says, real options, you know, it's here to help you and things like that. I just felt like, for me, that that was a sign. I call real options. I was told I have no insurance. I haven't seen a doctor, but I, I know that I'm only two months. And they're like, okay. So they gave me the appointment I want to select within like two days. When Yesenia initially came in, the first thing I noticed about her was that she was filled with fear. She didn't feel that she had any value, but she did. I just felt lost. I felt like I was really, you know, in this hole that I did I couldn't see. At that time, I really needed somebody to talk to. So thank God I found Amalia. I mean, she was like my angel at that time. And I think it makes a really big difference if someone has someone to talk to to walk with them. And that once they are in that place of security is when you can begin speaking truth. You can begin giving them information that they can receive. You can begin giving them all their options. You can begin speaking hope into their situation. The first time I actually went to, um, to the office, that's when I actually had my first ultrasound. She participated in our prenatal clinic and she also participated in the childbirth classes. And also she came in for consultations to help her during this difficult time of her life. I believe that Yosenia discovered 
the value that she has, the strength, that she's a woman of strength. I admire her. My baby girl was born December 30th, 2019. My baby's name is Ariana. She's a blessing in my life. This baby has only changed my life in a way just to live the moment, to live day by day, to really enjoy, enjoy myself, you know, enjoy who, who I am. God gave her that opportunity to see a little bit of light in that dark, in the darkness of Planned Parenthood. And that's all Yesenia needed. She just needed a little bit of light, a little bit of hope, a little bit of encouragement. And that's all she needed to leave. I think of it as two births. It was the birth of her baby girl, and it was also the birth of Yesenia. She's a new person. You know, she went through a really challenging time, but she came out of it new. I think that Reoptions is really doing a great job in serving their people. They had no clue who I was, you know, and as soon as I walked in, they just had the open arms and that smile, they, hey, how can we help you? They all bright light to my life. Well, I'm here with Valerie Hill, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Real Options Pregnancy Center. And uh, we have been partnering with Real Options for, I'm finding out, decades now. Yes. Uh, and the reason why we partner with Real Options is that uh, we love babies, um, and we love their moms, and mm -hmm. we want both baby and mom to be cared for um, mm -hmm. um, during pregnancy, after pregnancy, um, right. matters a lot to us. And you guys do a great job of Thank caring you. for um, babies, both in the womb and uh, once they come into the world. Mm -hmm. And so we're always so excited to partner with you guys uh, and everything that you're doing. Uh, for the people who aren't as familiar with Real Options, um, mm -hmm. What are you guys up to? What's the, uh, what's the vision of Real Options? Okay. Well, right now, Real Options have gone even beyond just being pregnancy clinics, but we're medical clinics because uh -huh. we've added services. And our vision, our big vision, is to advance a culture of life in the Bay Area and beyond. And we throw the beyond in there because mm -hmm. we see people in this Bay Area from all over the world. Sure. They go back home to India. They go back home to China and other places and we often have the privilege of helping them choose life in our clinics. So it's pretty cool that we get to do that. And uh, Real yeah. Options now has five locations in the Bay Area. So we're really uh, creating a ring of life-affirming care from Oakland to Redwood City, Union City, and two in San Jose. It's pretty exciting yeah, what God is doing. Yeah. I, we found as a church, too, that just where we are is a way to reach the whole world. It is. And so. Because the world comes to Silicon Valley and the Bay Area. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, is there a particular scripture that guides your mission for culture of life? Absolutely. I would say Psalm 139 talks mm -hmm. about being formed in your mother's womb, being knit together that you were fearfully and wonderfully made and that God has a plan and a purpose for every life that he created before it's at the end of the verse, it says before there was yet one day of your life, right. he already had a plan and purpose. Yeah. And we like to say, you know, God, we're all made in the image of a holy God. So whether we're a Christian or not, whether we're pro-life or pro-choice or However, we're, we're walking this earth. Every person is made in the image of a holy God and God does have a plan for every life. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we want to do all we can to make sure that people fulfill that purpose too. Yes. You know, they get an opportunity to right. live out all those days. Um, yes. So we're so glad with what you guys are doing. What, uh, maybe share some ways that the Lord's working through real options right now. Okay. Great. Well, uh, 
Through our medical clinics, we do a lot with those that are undecided about their pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, they're not sure because it's an unplanned pregnancy. And we see people coming in. Uh, our number one patient is 18 to 24. They're college students. Mm -hmm. They're juggling and they're thinking between their education and their pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So we have a campus pregnancy support team, uh, an official club at San Jose State. And we also go to different junior colleges when we're allowed or other Stanford, Santa Clara University. Mm -hmm. But being a presence on the college campuses is a great way to reach out to students and let them know that they don't have to choose between their education and their child, yeah. but we can support them through that. And therefore, through that outreach, we see a lot of college students coming in to our clinics. We see married people coming into the clinics. So the choice of not carrying a child to term, unfortunately, um, goes beyond the single woman to, the, to married mm -hmm. people today, because we are serving people from all cultures and not everybody has this Christian church background that they have or Catholic background to know that life is precious, mm -hmm. to know that there's a holy God that we're created in the image of. And uh, so they, they think that they have a right to choose, which is a sad, sad truth. And so we want to be there to give them a safe place to come in to our, we have trained patient advocates that meet with every person who comes in for a medical service. Mm -hmm. They get to have this um, consultation with a patient advocate who's trained to listen very well, ask good questions and care for women and men holistically mm -hmm. and care about their circumstances, their emotional health, their mental health, their housing, their financial circumstances, the family support that they may or may not have, mm -hmm. and who's pressuring them in their life to possibly terminate a pregnancy or who's going to be there for them. Sometimes we're the only ones that are there for them to, to in essence, put our arm around them in a way mm -hmm. and say, we can walk with you through this and you're gonna be blessed by this child's life. And then giving yeah. them an ultrasound to determine if they have a viable pregnancy uh, is very key to their decision and their full information. Um, also, helping that woman realize she's already a mom if that's a viable pregnancy and getting to see a heartbeat on a screen. Mm -hmm. I know even the kids uh, today see when mom has a second baby after them, and they see that ultrasound picture on the fridge, Yeah, they know that's their little brother or little sister. Yeah, they get it. Yeah. Right, they see so it. So that get ultrasound excited. is the window to the womb. Yeah. Yeah, it's and really makes it technology. real. Yeah. yeah, we still have our ultrasound pictures of both our, see? Both our boys. That's so cool. And one of them, his, uh, like, like the profile view, the side of his face, it still looks like oh, it's so amazing. His, you know, you can tell like yes. that's that's him. That's so cool. Yeah, I really all the all the counseling and how you're doing with housing and work and this um, walking with them through life really shows that you guys are mm -hmm. you're you're much much more than just a medical clinic, right? Yeah. Just a medical clinic, right? Or just a um, let's make sure you have this baby like right. as much. You actually care about yes. these patients and what's happening in their life. Um, and so that's awesome. Absolutely, that's and we're not the... there to coerce them and we're not there to judge them. But a part of that holistic conversation that we have is what's your, what's your religion? What's your upbringing? What's your moral code? Because we're talking again to the world, mm -hmm. um, people that may have a Christian background, may have a Catholic background, but they may be Muslim or Buddhist or Hindu. So how's this decision about this pregnancy gonna affect your moral code? And then can we share a few scriptures? We ask permission. Mm -hmm. Can we pray with you? So we try um, to pray with every patient. We, our desire is to pray with every patient before they have that ultrasound. And then possibly even afterwards, if they'll come back to, to the advocate, I kind of 
see it this way, you know, we've got the medical services and they're robust today. They go way beyond ultrasound. Um, but adding that advocacy, that person to walk alongside um, gives them that security, right. yeah. Yeah. that compassion. Yeah. yeah, we really, it's it's hard to do life alone ever. It and is. Especially in a situation like that, you don't want to feel isolated. Right. So that's part of the culture of life that you said. Yes. Um, it's more than just a clinic. But what, what other programs uh, do you have for culture of life? It's like in schools, in okay. um, counseling, yeah. what? What else you got going well, on? Well, we, um, uh, in addition to the medical services, uh, we also do uh, childbirth and parenting classes, mm -hmm. prenatal appointments and well woman appointments for those women um, through their pregnancy and after. So we want them to be able to come back to us. And then in schools, what we have, all of our advocates are trained also as certified health coaches. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes in to be tested for a disease because they're not in a healthy relationship, mm -hmm. um, we can have that conversation with them about how to have healthy relationships, mm -hmm. how to set boundaries. And in schools, we're in actually Alam Rock um, School District in East San Jose, mm -hmm. all nine of their sixth grade classes, teaching about healthy relationships, teaching about your love language and how to fill up your love tank and being mm -hmm. aware of what's going on with social media or cyberbullying and lots of things that kids are exposed to today that I was never exposed to in right, school. Yeah. And to be able to be in the sixth grade and give them prevention education so they don't right. have difficult choices yeah. to make later on in their life. Right. That's such an awesome privilege for us. And we serve youth groups. Uh, we'd be happy to come here and <laughs> serve your youth. Yeah. Uh, we tailor the program. It's all science-based, but it's easy to add the scriptures to it. And we do that in Christian schools. We're at King's Academy and mm -hmm. uh, Valley Christian. So we love being in the schools. We'll serve fifth grade through um, 12th. And then we do some of that even with college students in different uh, environments and also parents seminars and webinars to equip parents so they know how to talk to their children about these life, life skills and life decisions. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Again, yeah. culture of life, not, yes. not just a The whole clinic. life, that's yes. Awesome. So how did you get involved in Real Options? That's a good question. Uh, back in 1989, I had uh, graduated from Bible college and well, I, I should back up from there. I had a daughter when I was almost 19. So she's gonna be 44, giving away my age here. And uh, I never even thought of, of terminating that pregnancy. I got married and had a baby and she's a beautiful, beautiful young woman today. But when I was getting out of that marriage that was very abusive, Mm -hmm. I terminated a pregnancy because I didn't think I could be a good mother to her. Mm -hmm. And what I did was really steal her only sibling. Mm -hmm. We don't think about that. Mm -hmm. um, when we make these decisions, when women make these difficult decisions, they're made often out of fear mm -hmm. and not having anybody else to talk to. Mm -hmm. And that was my, my circumstance. And my local doctor just did what I asked and, you know, there's, mm -hmm. it, it's a service that they're, they're getting money for and it's uh, devastating mm -hmm. to, to women to go through that mm -hmm. afterwards. Shame, guilt, mm -hmm. depression, um, when we make decisions that aren't God's best for our lives, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I suffered with that, but I was invited to a non-denominational church mm -hmm. a few months later for Easter Sunday and found Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior that day. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I needed healing uh -huh. from that bad decision. And I didn't find it right away, but I went to three-year Bible college program, soaked up the word, mm -hmm. and wrote my one of my final term papers on the local mission of Crisis Pregnancy Center. <laughs> so when I graduated, the Lord said, now go and serve. 
Wow. So I signed up as a volunteer and I became mm -hmm. one of those advocates that met with the women who were coming in for pregnancy mm -hmm. tests. And our executive director at the time asked me to help her lead because I was transparent with those ladies. I felt mm -hmm. safe there. And I told them my story and she said, will you help me lead uh, Bible studies for women who've made those decisions? And let's mm -hmm. help heal some women in our community. Mm -hmm. So for six years as a volunteer, I led those Bible study support groups mm -hmm. and saw lots of women freed from that shame and mm -hmm. learn how to for forgive themselves as mothers, mm -hmm. as women, which can be a hard thing to do. And I was a volunteer all the way to 2007 when I was invited to serve as the executive director. And I had no clue God would call me to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's how I got involved. It's been 31 years. Wow. Yeah. When um, and maybe how too do you think at what, like at what point did healing happen for you? You said you were carrying this shame. I would say leading those support groups. Mm. Um, I really sensed they were eight week support groups full of the word. They were uh, called Forgiven and Set Free mm -hmm. Bible Study. Still an excellent Bible study today. It's hard to get women today in, in our culture to come for eight weeks straight to a Bible study necessarily um, on a difficult issue that they may not feel like they want to deal with. But as I led other women through that healing and the stages of grieving and accepting God's forgiveness and forgiving ourselves and memorializing our children, uh, God peeled layer after layer off my own heart. Mm. And I'm thankful that he did. I probably wouldn't want to sit here and even be able to talk about this today sure. or speak to other uh, groups about it as openly as I can. But I learned firsthand the beauty he can give us for the ashes of our past sin. Mm -hmm. And choosing not to have your child is a sin against God. Mm -hmm. And it's a sin against yourself. Mm -hmm. And often uh, women damage their own lives through drug, drug addiction, alcoholism, uh, food uh, addictions and issues or issues mm -hmm. bonding with the children then that they do have later in life overbonding and underbonding because of that one mm -hmm. sin way back when. Mm -hmm. So instead of leaving things hidden, I, I'm a firm believer that the enemy of our souls mm -hmm. uses secrets to breed shame in us. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Bible study is called forgiven and set free. Mm -hmm. I believe God wants his people to be forgiven and set free to be the powerful, strong, loving Christians he wants us to be and to be effective for each other in the body of Christ and for the world. Mm -hmm. But we can't be effective witnesses if we're always holding on to some secret and the shame of our past. So yeah. being able to be free is, is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I love most about that is that um, if, if, if somebody has this decision in their past, mm -hmm. um, that it doesn't have to continue to be a source of shame. Right. It could it could be a sense a source of purpose. That's right. Right. That's where you you yes. found your purpose. That's why you're yes. here in some sense. Yes. Right. It's not long term. It's not condemnation. That's long term. Right. It's restoration. Totally. Um, life and newness. And so that's yeah. uh, so neat to hear. Um, that's like what we how call God redeemed your story. Yeah. And that's available to everybody. Yes. Yeah. We call it our hope program because it gives us hope. Yeah. And we've widened that net for even people that didn't choose to end a pregnancy, but they had a miscarriage or they had a stillbirth. So it's for mm -hmm. all pregnancy loss. And we don't do as many of the eight week Bible studies. We still offer them if people want to do them. Um, but we do support groups on Zoom twice a month mm -hmm. right now. So you can drop in from anywhere. You don't have to go anywhere. And that kind of breaks down the barriers to be able to do that. And then four times a year, we have what's called a Rachel's Vineyard Retreat. Awesome. Women can come, men can come alone, and couples come. Mm -hmm. And this, again, it's for any pregnancy loss of any kind. And it's a, a powerful program, and it's right here in the local area at a retreat center. Oh, cool. Yeah. So where could people go to learn about 
that those retreats, those groups, or any of your other Thank uh, you. services and programs? They can go to our website at friendsofrealoptions.net okay. or just realoptions.net for the medical clinics and the, uh, the retreats are on there, the education's on there. If, if people would like to volunteer or they want to get involved, like with our Walk for Life, you guys are awesome. You're doing our Walk for Life here and raising funds for Real Options, and we're so appreciative of that. That's on friendsofrealoptions.net. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, I know a number of our people are already involved. They are. I'm sure yeah. um, many others will want to become involved. So um, thanks again for hanging out with us today and Thank sharing. You. Um, sharing about real options and sharing your story. Um, you're very welcome. We're, uh, we're really grateful for what you're doing um, yeah. and to be able to partner. Well, thank you. you. It's a privilege for all of us. We have a fabulous team of God's people coming together to do this work in the Bay Area and we're, we're grateful we could do it. We thank you for your partnership. Sure thing. Okay, yep. thank you. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your
Hey, thanks again for connecting with our online service as we drew um, attention to the importance of life in the womb. Uh, if you had any questions uh, that popped in your mind as a result of our um, interview or um, mini devotional at, before the, the interview, uh, if any questions were stirred up in your heart that you would like to send to us, we want to hear them. There's a button over there on the side of the screen that says sermon questions. And us as pastors have really enjoyed interacting with how you are hearing and perceiving and understanding uh, our messages and our services. We'd also uh, draw attention to the giving link there. We so appreciate uh, all of the gifts that, that you guys um, uh, send to Bridges Community Church. Uh, we're so grateful for those. Our mission partners like Real Options are so grateful for those as we support our mission partners all over the world. And we are, uh, we are able to continue all the ministries at Bridges Community Church, getting Jesus into uh, people's hearts in our community um, and growing us as believers closer to him. Well, hey, uh, thanks again for participating in our service and we will see you next time.